Hi, I'm Rocco Stano, and welcome to Read Out Loud on KidLit TV. I went into my collection of books and pulled out this book for you. It's Stone Soup by Marsha Brown. Over here, and then I'll open this up. And this book is actually autographed. It says, For Elizabeth, a handy recipe, Marsha Brown. And we see this gentleman here playing an instrument and this young girl eating something. Let's find out what they're eating. Stone Soup, an old tale, told and pictured by Marsha Brown. That means she wrote the words and she drew the pictures. And then there's a pot here. It is the dedication. That means that the author has dedicated this book to someone special. And it says, to my mother and father, right there in the smoke coming out of the pot. Three soldiers trudged down a road in a strange country. They were on their way home from the wars. Besides being tired, they were hungry. In fact, they had not eaten nothing for two days. How would you like a good dinner tonight, said the first, and a bed to sleep in, said the second. But all that is impossible, said the third. We must march on. On they marched. Suddenly, ahead of them, they saw lights of a village. Right there, lights of a village. Maybe we will find a bite to eat there, said the first. And a loft to sleep in, said the second. No harm in asking, said the third. Now the peasants of that place feared strangers. When they heard that three soldiers were coming down the road, they talked among themselves. Here come three soldiers. Soldiers are always hungry, but we have little enough for ourselves. And then they hurried to hide their food. They pushed sacks of barley under the hay in the lofts. They lowered buckets of milk down the well. They spread old quilts over the carrot bins. They hid their cabbages and potatoes under the beds. They hung their meat in the cellars. They hid all they had to eat. Then they waited. The soldiers stopped at the first house of Paul and Francois. Good evening to you, they said. Could you spare a bit of food for three hungry soldiers? We have no food for ourselves for three days, said Paul. Francois made a sad face. It has been a poor harvest. The three soldiers went on to the house of Albert and Louise. Could you spare a bit of food? And have you some corner where we could sleep for the night? Oh no, said Albert. We gave all we could spare to the soldiers who came before you. Our beds are full, said Louise. Hmm. Now look at this family. Quite a big family, wouldn't you say? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 people in that picture. Let's find out what happens here. At Vincent and Marie's, the answer was the same. It has been a poor harvest and all the grain must be kept for seed. So it went through the village. Not a peasant had any food to give away. They all had good reasons. One family had used the grain for feed. Another had an old sick father to care for. All had too many mouths to fill. 
But the villagers stood in the street and sighed. They looked as hungry as they could. Three soldiers talked together. Here they are, talking. Then the first soldier called out, Good people! The peasants drew near. We are three hungry soldiers in a strange land. We have asked you for food and you have no food. Well, then we have to make stone soup. The peasants stared. Stone soup? That would be something to know about. First, we'll need a large iron pot, the soldiers said. The peasants brought the largest pot they could find. How else to cook enough? That's none too large, said the soldiers, but it will do. And now water to fill it and a fire to heat it. It took many buckets of water to fill the pot. A fire was built on the village square and the pot was set to boil. And now, if you please, three round, smooth stones. Those were easy enough to find. The peasants' eyes grew round as they watched the soldiers drop the stones into the pot. What stone soup without some stones? Any soup needs salt and pepper, said the soldiers as they began to stir. Children ran to fetch salt and pepper. Stones like these generally make good soup, but oh, if there were carrots, it would be much better. Why, I think I have a carrot or two, said Francois, and off she ran. She came back with her apron full of carrots from the bin beneath the red quilt. Remember they hid the carrots? A good soup should have cabbage, said the soldiers as they sliced the carrots into the pot. But no use asking for what we don't have. Uh, I think I could find a cabbage somewhere, said Marie, and she hurried home. Back she came with three cabbages from the cupboard under the bed. If we only had a bit of beef and a few potatoes, this soup would be good enough for a rich man's table. The peasants thought that over. They remembered their potatoes and the sides of beef hanging in the cellar. They ran to fetch them a rich man's soup and all from a few stones. It seemed like magic. Here they are carrying the meat for the soup. Ah, sighed the soldiers as they stirred in the beef and the potatoes. If we only had a little barley and a cup of milk, this soup would be fit for the king himself. Indeed, he asked for just such a soup when last he dined with us. The peasants looked at each other. The soldiers had entertained the king well, isn't that something? But no use asking for what we don't have, the soldiers sighed. The peasants brought their barley from the lofts. They brought the milk from the wells. The soldiers stirred the barley and the milk into the steaming broth while the peasants stared. At last, the soup was ready. All of you shall taste, the soldier said, but first a table must be set. 
Great tables were placed in the square and all around were lighted torches. Such a soup, how good it smelled. Truly fit for a king. But then the peasants asked themselves, would not such a soup require bread and a roast and cider? Soon a banquet was spread and everyone sat down to eat. Never had there been such a feast. Never had the peasants tasted such soup. And fancy, made from stones. They ate and drank and ate and drank, and after that, they danced. They danced and they sang far into the night. At last, they were tired. Then the three soldiers asked, is there not a loft where we could sleep? Let three such wise and splendid gentlemen sleep in a loft? Indeed, they must have the best beds in the village. So the first soldier slept in the priest's house. The second soldier slept in the baker's house. And the third soldier slept in the mayor's house. In the morning, the whole village gathered in the square to give them a send-off. Many thanks for what you have taught us, the peasants said to the soldiers. We shall never go hungry now that we know how to make soup from stones. Oh, it's all in knowing how, said the soldiers, and off they went down the road. Such men don't grow on every bush. And that's stone soup.